Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In this video, I'll introduce and explain a common reaction type called a precipitation reaction. Remember that so far we've seen five general reaction types like synthesis, decomposition, single, and double replacement, as well as combustion. What we haven't seen is that there's also other reaction types that tend to overlap with one or more of these general five. In this video, we'll cover just one of those overlapping reaction types called precipitation reactions. With these reactions, you'll have two aqueous reactants. Aqueous means that they're dissolved in water. And when you mix those two solutions together, you'll get a new product, and that new product will be a solid. So that's how you can identify precipitation reactions. When you're doing these reactions in lab, you can look for two clear or translucent solutions. That means you can see through them. And when you mix them, they become cloudy and change color since you're forming that new solid product. Here you can see the white cloud being formed in the solution. That's our new solid product. This is a precipitation reaction. Here, these two solutions produce a yellow solid that kind of sinks to the bottom. That's also why they're called precipitation reactions is because your, your new solid tends to snow or rain or kind of sink down to the bottom just like precipitation falls out of the sky. Now, on paper, to identify a precipitation reaction, you'll need a set of rules known as solubility rules. Solubility rules are just that. It's a set of rules. And those rules summarize patterns in solubility for various substances. Typically, these substances are ionic compounds. Basically, you can take any substance and determine with a set of solubility rules, like you see here, whether it's going to be soluble in water or not. Here's two different versions. Any chemistry textbook will have one, as well as I just Googled solubility rule table, and this is what I found. In this video, we'll stick with the one on the left since it's a nice, clear example. And we'll use these rules to try and determine for a given equation if it will be a precipitation reaction or not. So here's how the solubility rules chart works. Basically, it has two lists. On the top, it lists soluble ionic compounds. And on the bottom, it lists the insoluble ones. So all you've got to do is check the substances in your equation and decide which of the two lists they fall on. Right away, I notice at the top of the soluble list, the ion NO3 minus. It says compounds containing NO3- with no exceptions will be soluble. That means my PbNO3 2, since it has the NO3 ion, will be soluble. That means it dissolves in water and I can label it AQ. In my products, I've also got NaNO3, which also contains the NO3 ion, so it will also be soluble and I can label it as AQ as well. The other reactant here is NaI, which contains the I- ion. I minus is listed in the soluble ionic compounds column, so NAI I can label as AQ also. In the products, I've got PBI2, which also contains I minus, except with I minus, there are some listed exceptions, and PB is one of them. That means even though I minus is usually soluble, it's not soluble with these three. So my PBI2 product will not dissolve in water, and I can label it with an S for solid. Now I see I've got two aqueous reactants, and they're producing a new solid product, so this fits the definition of a precipitation reaction. One final label here is that this solid product has a name. Once you identify it, that PBI2 is henceforth referred to as a precipitate. Let's take a look at one more example. Here I've got lithium chloride, which contains the Cl- ion in the soluble column, so I'm going to list it as AQ. In the products, NaCl also has Cl-, so it will also be soluble. In Na2SO4, I see SO4, which is usually soluble. Again, there's some exceptions, but sodium's not one of them, so this will be aqueous. Same thing with lithium sulfate, also going to be aqueous. Here, all the reactants and all the products will dissolve in water. So I do have two aque aqueous reactants, but they don't produce a new solid product. So this would not be a precipitation reaction. And in fact, when your products are aqueous too, technically no reaction takes place at all. Although we'll get more into that later. That wraps up this video on precipitation reactions. Here's a brief summary. 